For the first time in South African history, more people are living in urban areas rather than rural regions. Going into an election as we are later this year, this makes the urban vote more crucial than ever before. Let's unpack this with the CEO of the South African Cities Network, Sitole Mbanga. Thank you so much for coming in to Good speak evening. to us, Sitole. Let's just look at the figures first. How big is the influx of people we've seen into metropolitan areas in the last few years? It's unprecedented. I mean, even if we provide uh, figures, um, what we know is that the reality far surpasses the figures that we are currently providing. Um, I think it is estimated that each of the largest metropolitan areas and um, your intermediary or secondary municipalities on average are growing at something between 4 and 6 percent, depending on, on which one it is. Uh, just break this down for me. When we look at a city like Johannesburg, for right. example, what percentage of residents is working class, middle class and elite? Well, the elite is quite uh, a small percentage of the total population. The, by far, the majority of people that are living in cities are, in fact, poor. If you look at uh, the rate of unemployment, that also tells you that that's a, also a contributing factor, that most of them are really struggling to make uh, ends meet in the various cities. At some point, when we published the State of Finances report last year, one of the issues we mentioned was that to live in a city was becoming unaffordable. So that should give you a sense of how difficult to live in a city is becoming. And yet people continue to be attracted to come and live in cities because cities are equally uh, places of hope. That's where people are seeing better opportunities uh, for jobs, for education, for access to services, comparatively speaking, with other areas. You, you've mentioned a very important point here. I mean, when we think of urban dwellers, we, we traditionally think of the middle class and so forth. But, of course, a number of those, those urban dwellers and, and people living in, in metropolitan areas are living in informal settlements without any services. What sort of pressure does that add to political parties who want to take those in elections? Well, by far, the majority of people that live in cities are working class people, if not unemployed people. And I think um, uh, at the beginning of South Africa's democracy, there was a notion that poverty is a rural phenomenon. And over time, what has uh, happened and what we understand is that, in fact, poverty is a very urban phenomenon. I mean, and poverty has moved away from rural areas, if that was the understanding, into urban areas. Now, with not just poverty, but also the size of the population, you've, you were mentioning now that South Africa is urbanized. We, uh, we estimate that by the year 2050, 70% of South Africa's population will be living in urban areas. In fact, now it's in the higher 60s. And that's where the bulk of the population lives, and that's why why um, political parties are utilizing cities to launch their manifestos in the coming weeks now that the local government elections date has been pronounced to be the 3rd of June. People believe the assumption is that uh, urban dwellers are more sophisticated, more astute and more politically critical. Is that necessarily accurate? Not, no, it's not accurate. I mean, for starters, especially in the South African uh, case, most of those people that come, that live in urban areas actually come from rural areas. So it's not automatic that when you are an urban dweller, you are more sophisticated and all of that. People come to cities because they see opportunities. I mean, our cities are young. Um, uh, by far, the average age is between 25 and 35. Now, that's a young population and they, are, they all come to the cities because they are looking for opportunities and for jobs. Yeah. And when they don't get the services they're hoping... They get frustrated. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a natural phenomenon. Um, we have put it in the South African policy machinery as cities, um, as, as, as sector departments, that it's quite important for us to transform our cities so that they accommodate the needs um, of young people today and tomorrow, which is why it's important that the IEC drive to have young people registering for elections is important because what happens in cities tomorrow really depends on what young people today do. When we look at, at a city like Cape Town ruled by the DA and, and we look at, at other cities, major cities ruled by the ANC, would you say those parties have failed to, to deliver on their election promises or is, is the problem that there's such an influx of people in, into those areas that the, the goalposts keep moving? Far from it. I mean, cities have delivered. In fact, the bulk of local government has delivered. I think we, we need to take you back. There are two main uh, purposes for which 
in this current phase of our life, political life in South Africa, uh, municipalities were, were established. One, deliver basic services. Number two, grow the economy. On the one part, which is delivering basic services, if you go by statistical uh, uh, information from Stats SA and other sources, municipalities have delivered. Uh, in the 90s, in the 80s, water. It could be that some, from time to time we argue about the quality of water, sometimes the reticulation processes, whether it's electricity, roads. I mean, there is something that's happening. The biggest problem that's facing South African cities and municipalities is the economy. And a, an economy that doesn't pump automatically, automatically implies that a city doesn't have a good source of revenue, which means even the basic services at some point are going to come to a halt. Remember that South African local governments do not receive a lot of money from the national fiscals, at least in a direct way. I think if our figures are correct, it's approximately 8%. The rest comes in the form um, of grants that are conditional. Now, you can only do so much with a conditional grant. So that's part and parcel of the biggest problem. The economy is not uh, pumping enough. It's not uh, pumping enough to be able to produce jobs, jobs that then translate into the revenues for the various municipalities. One last quick one. Um, are uh, people in metropolitan areas more likely to protest over service delivery than those in rural areas? <laughs> that's interesting. In fact, there's been more protests in urban areas, in metropolitan areas. However, when you look at the protest itself, most of them are not just only about service delivery. They are about other related services which the population understands to be services that must be delivered by a municipality when in fact it's a function of a totally different government uh, sphere, national or provincial or for that matter a totally, totally different uh, uh, government department. L like policing for example? Policing for instance, I mean, safety. Let's, 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 let's use the word broadly and, and talk about safety. Safety is not only a local government matter. Also, there are certain functions that at this present uh, moment are not municipal functions and yet people think that they are municipal uh, functions. I mean, human settlement is not just only a, a, a local government function, all spheres of government, but who is to blame when there's less houses? It's, it's, the, local, it's the local authorities, it's the municipalities, and they only get to be uh, blamed. And in certain instances, public transportation for that matter, it's not just a local government function. So under the circumstances, where it is difficult to function. I mean, someone made an example and said, the way in which our municipalities are functioning, it's almost like asking rugby uh, players to play rugby utilizing soccer rules. You know, it's, it can't be. It's a very difficult game to be in local government. Very, very interesting indeed and, and very illuminating talking to you. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming in to speak to us. Itole Mbanga, CEO of the South African Cities Network, certainly gives us an idea of exactly what political parties will have to bear in mind as they launch their election manifestos in those metropolitan areas.